Today we're going to look at this beam problem right here. So what we have is two, two point loads at the ends, 300 pounds, 300 pounds. We have a 200 foot pound distributed load and we have a roller support here and a pin support here. So these supports can apply no counter moment or moment reaction as a support. Uh, although there will be moments uh, in the beam here, but that's because of the uh, distributed loads and the point loads. And we have a four foot section, a six foot section, and a four foot section. So what we're going to do now is we're going to solve for reactions. Remember the relationships that are really important to solving these problems. We have the dB by dx, or this slope of the shear curve, is equal to the distributed load, which is 200 foot, negative 200 foot pounds in this case. Uh, delta V, or the change in V, over distance is basically equal to the area under the distributed load curve. This is your W here for distributed load. The change, the slope of your, the dm by dx of the slope of the moment curve is equal to the shear value. And then the change in moment is equal to the area under the shear curve. So solving for reactions, why don't we start by taking the moment about A. So that's right here. All right, so sigma MA. MA equals zero. We're going to say positive counterclockwise. So about here we've got plus 300, sorry, equals zero equals 300 uh, times four feet, distance from A. So 300 times four feet. And this is pounds here. Uh, then we've got a resultant reaction here, which I forgot to solve for. But remember, we have a 200 foot-pound distributed load here. So 200 foot-pounds times 4 plus 6 plus 4, that's 200 foot-pounds times 14 feet, is 2,800 pounds total. And we assume basically that that acts for solving for reactions at the very middle of the beam. Okay, so this here, FR note, let's put a little note here. FR equals 200 to negative 200 times 14 feet equals negative 2,800 pounds. Okay, so that's the total load from the distributed, and we consider it to be acting at the middle of the beam as a point load to solve for the reactions. So then we have our unknown, let's see our unknown RB, which is also positive, so RB times six feet. Then we're gonna say negative 2800, because that's your FR here. It's acting at three feet from A, so negative 2800 times three feet. And then additionally, your negative 300, your 300 pounds at the end is acting at 6 plus 4 is 10 feet. So it's going to be negative, and it's also going clockwise, so it's going to be negative 300. So 300 times 10 feet. And that's pounds, and that's pounds. And that's pounds there. Okay, so we have one unknown, one equation. So let's rearrange our equation. We get RB6 times 6 is equal to 10,200. 10,200 foot pounds, or RB equals 1,700 pounds. And to solve for to solve for R A now, we just do sigma F Y equals zero equals negative three hundred minus twenty eight hundred plus seventeen hundred minus three hundred plus a reaction at A. So RA 
equals 1,700 pounds, which makes sense because we have a completely symmetrical load. We have 300, 300, 4, 4, 6, and 200. So the reaction here by symmetry should equal the reaction here. Okay, so let's get into our shear and bending moment diagrams. Scroll down here. Just going to draw them on the right here. We have shear and bending, okay? So this is going to be shear, and this is going to be bending. Okay, so what we first need to do is by method of section solve for the value of shear right at the edge of the beams here and here. And that'll give us the starting points to start drawing our curves. So by method of sections, I'm going to take the section right here. Okay, we're going to draw an FBD. Let me just separate this here. So FBD. So we're going to have this here. We're going to have V. Remember, this is positive V for shear and bending moment diagrams, even though this is our plus direction, positive. V, we've got an M here. We've got 300 pounds here. So sigma Fy equals 0 equals negative 300 minus V, or V is equal to negative 300. So over here now, we're going to have a shear value of about negative 300 right here, negative 300. Now taking the method of sections, applying the method of sections here, we're also going to look for shear. Now you're absolutely right to say just to go back for a second, that there is a distributed load across here, right? But when you think about shear, to solve for your boundary conditions, what we do is we get so close to the end that this becomes this distributed load here. Sorry, it's getting a bit crammed here. W. We just ignore it. We're just going to look at your 300 pound force out here. Because as you get closer and closer and closer, this the effect of the distributed load becomes less. So we know right at the edge of the beam, we have a shear value of negative 300 pounds. So again, method of sections, FBD. Okay, this is going to be the exact opposite. Now this is positive shear here. We're going to have a positive moment this way, although we're not going to deal with it. We're going to have negative 300 here, or sorry, 300 going down. And then we still have our tiny distributed load, but again, we're going to get so close to the end that this distributed load W, or 200 pounds per foot, is negligible. So sigma F Y equals 0 equals negative 300 plus V, or V is equal to 300. Okay, so let's go over to our curve here. So that means we've got a 300 pound shear right out here. Okay, so recall what are our relationships? So we know the slope of the V, your dV by dx, the slope of your shear curve is equal to the distributed load. Well, we always assume the distributed load acting downwards is negative 200. So the slope, that means the slope of our shear curve is going to be negative 200. So when I go back here, that means between this point and this point, which is four feet, recall, this is four feet, so we have a slope of negative 200. So four times negative 200 is negative eight hundred, sorry. So we're gonna go by slope from negative 300 to negative 1100. And that's until we hit this support right here. Then we have to account for a different reaction. Okay, the addition of this 1700 pound reaction. So 
that's going to be down to 1100. So this one, again, this is a negative slope here. If I just put your negative W or 200 pounds. This is a negative 200 pounds per foot, which is this slope here. So again, also over here, we're going to go four feet this way at negative 200. But since we're moving in the negative direction, we're going to go up to over here. We're going to have 1,100. Okay. So now we've got slope two lines this way, negative two. Again, this is negative 200 pounds per foot. And now we've hit. Point A, is it point A and point B? Point A, yes, and point B. So this is A, and this is B. So what's going to happen here is we're going to have the addition of a 1,700 pound load. Okay, so let's draw a free body diagram, FBD again. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw the FBD up to just past your RAY, close enough that the addition of the distributed load beyond there doesn't count, but just enough beyond it to catch the RA. Okay, so let's draw our FBD here. So we've got, so this is 300. Ah, terrible, I've crammed too much in here. Give me one second here, okay. So we've got our F, B, D. So we've got 300. Over 4 feet, we've got negative 200 foot-pounds times 4. So we've got a negative 800. Negative, so we've got 800 pounds here. Then we've got... 1700 here and then we've got our shear value going down but it was considered the positive orientation on this plot here so if we do sigma fy remember this is your distributed load w acting there right in the middle so sigma fy equals negative 300 minus 800 plus 1700 so that e minus V equals zero, or V is equal to 600 pounds. So what happens when you hit A is you now jump up to 600 pounds. OK. Now, you can see by symmetry that this is probably going to happen if you look here, one second, by symmetry, this is probably going to drop down to negative 600. And then you've got negative, you get a negative 200 slope over 6 feet, which equals 12, negative 1,200. So we go from here at plus 600. Sorry, this is totally not to scale. But I think you get the point here. And this is negative 600 and then you know the curves must join here okay now I will prove to you that we we drop down to negative 600 here just by doing a quick FBD here so the FBD coming this way over here from the far side of the beam here let's do FBD so we're going to have here. So we're going to have 1,700 here, 300 here, 800 here. That's the middle section. This is a resultant of the distributed load. And then we're going to have our V right here. So sigma f y equals zero equals v plus seventeen hundred 
minus 800 minus 300. So V is equal to 600, right? So that's where we are. So that should be negative 600. Yes, negative 600. Negative 600 right there. So we're at negative 600. So now, based on this relationship here, we can quickly come up with our moment diagram. So we know that for the given beam, it's not cantilever, so our moment here and here must be zero. Okay, so we're going to draw M, zero and zero here, okay? Then we know delta M is equal to the area under the shear curve, right? Delta M is equal to VDX. Well, what's this area here? Negative 300, negative 100 over 4 phi, right? So delta M equals negative 300 minus 1100 over 2. And this gives you the average height somewhere in here, right? Times 4 feet. What does that equal? That equals negative 2,800 pounds, foot pounds. 2,800 foot pounds. So the other, key, the other thing we have to remember, so we're going to go to negative 2,800, but how are we going to get there? 800. So remember this slope of this curve here represents the slope of the m. So dm by dx up here, right here, is equal, to the, is equal to the slope of the shear curve. So we're not going to have a zero slope here. It's going to be negative 300. And then it's going to go something like this. It's going to continue to decrease. And then we're going to hit this jump. So you know now the curve must go to a positive 600 slope. But in order to find out what it happens in the middle here, right, now you've got a positive area. So this is going to be 600. This is going to be at your midpoint, which is three feet away, if you recall. We're here now. We're going to go to the midpoint. We're going to hit zero. Okay, so the second area, delta M, equals, again, the area of a trapezoid, is equal to 600 plus 0 over 2 times 3 feet. Well, this is going to equal 900, positive 900 foot-pounds. So negative 2,800 plus 900 is going to take you to 1,900, which is right here. So this, and now we are going to hit a zero slope here. OK. Well, at this point, you're going to, you know that this area is 2,800, negative 2,800, 2,800. Well, this area here is also 2,800, right? So. So this is going to take you down, again, negative 900 by symmetry to negative 2,800. And then you're going to have this positive contribution, your delta m, this way. And note I don't have a slope of 0 here. So this is our m curve. One thing I want to note is if you started over here, since you're going this way, your change, although this area is positive, your change in area, since this is negative, is actually negative because um, you're moving in the negative direction along the axis. And that's how, if you started over here, when you look at this area, since it's going this way, you would, you would make a negative over here. So that wraps up this problem. Now to work on the next one.